Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Live with Corn Warriors. Except this is a bean field. And we're here with Chris Weaver. Hey guys, how you doing? What's up, Chris? Not much. Uh tell us what we're looking at here, sir. So I brought you down here today to what we call our research plots. Uh everything's broke down in 10 acre sections. Um Ed's out in the combine right now. He didn't know. I didn't let him know we were going Facebook Live, so this will be a surprise. One of the things, uh, Ed loves going Facebook Live, so he would have been here in my place. <laughs> um, we're harvesting Monty's Magma Hume trials right now and finishing up the plot work on their new product called Magma Hume. And then after the Magma Hume trials, we are working on some Monty's um, Hume Hance trials on dry potash and other dry goods is the next set of trials we have to come by after this. So we brought you down today. Everything is done on soybeans. This is our research facility. Um, as you'll see, there's fences around the outside. Not every field's fenced, but what we try to do is eliminate wildlife pressure in research. That's why the fences are here. And we're looking at different products that'll lead us to the next section of high yielding beans. Nice, I hear you do pretty good with your beans. Did pretty good this year. Uh, pretty excited. I mean, you're gonna have to tune in to Podfathers if you want to find out how I, I finished, but I know it's a lot better than Temple Rhodes could do. I mean, I probably did double what Temple's gonna do this year. <laughs> oh, well, he had a rough year, though. Uh, that's what he says that every year. Oh, okay. every year's a rough year for Temple. Yeah, but um, did you get some of that wind that he got that knocked out like 10% of his corn or something? Yeah, we got a lot of wind. We've got zero, hardly any rain here except for the last couple weeks. So, you know, we're really blessed. Uh, corn yields, uh, farm average about 200, 210. Bean yields, we've had the best bean yield we've ever had in our, you know, bean yields we've ever had. So, you know, I, we're not finished yet to finish out farm average on beans, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be the best bean year we've ever had. Nice. Well, that sounds promising. It does, it's I really good. I can't wait to see uh, some of your episodes in the Podfather. Yeah, I can't either. I mean, it's gonna be pretty exciting to, uh, See how we do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. My goal is only to beat Temple. Oh, just yep. Temple. As no, long but... as I beat Temple, I'm happy. Yeah. So uh, what's he doing today? Did you talk to him today? I did. I talked to him today. Uh, he woke up after a seven-hour nap. Oh, wow. I'm just joking. Ah. He's like me. He doesn't sleep. <laughs> um, he's actually down doing his Podfather contest beans today. Oh, nice. Yes. He said they're only half as good as mine. Okay. Well... I don't know. We'll, we'll have to go there and uh, go Yeah, you're going to have to go see how he does, but you yeah. can call me later and tell me how bad they were. I, oh, whoops. Chopping off our heads. That's all right. Sorry about that, guys. So, um, so a lot of research. So this is not where the new stuff starts, though, right? You are explaining earlier you have... So we, do, we have a laboratory on the farm, so we do everything first in the laboratory. We go through every product to see if it's something we would use on the ground. And, you know, one of the things that I always like to say is I am a sixth generation farmer. Ed's a fourth generation farmer. Um, we want to be able to give back. Mackenzie's six, Charlie's four. I want to make sure everything we're doing is right for our, my, my kids. Um, and we're not doing anything we wouldn't do. So we first test it in the lab to see if it's something we'll do. Um, over here, we were doing phosphorus or uh, potassium studies mm -hmm. as we found out that, you know, just because a company says it's low salt, it's not really low salt. So, you know, this is what we feel important as farmers that we need to be out doing is our own research, not just taking the word of someone else saying, oh, use this product because we did it on our company owned research farm and it worked. Right. So, you know, as I always laugh, when a company owned research farm always has positive ROI on all their products, something sounds fishy to me. So, <laughs> That's why we started doing this. Ed and I have been doing this uh, about five years now for, on our own. We've got, um, I think, in total about 100 different products we're testing, if not more. Wow, that's a um, lot of products. Takes a lot of time. Yeah, it As does. you guys will see, you know, when you, when you start checking out Ed in the old New Holland, yeah, um, cool. it goes slow. Yeah. We're weighing everything. We do everything by scale. So we're checking to see what our yields are, how we're going to compare. You know, the, the plots that he's in now, we've used Magma Hume at various rates. Um, we're seeing how they do in bean production, plus it, what other products. I mean, the, the plot that he's in right now is Magma Hume with Monty's Carbon, Monty's Sugar, and we're seeing where they're 
more positive ROI using some extra products with these other products. Uh, when we get to the Humahance, you know, we're looking at stabilizing dry fertilizer and increasing the salt load. We all know dry potash is high in salt. Well, what's a better way than to buffer that salt than using a human? So with Humahance, now we're buffering the salt and potash, plus now we're stabilizing phosphorus and nitrogen and uh, DAP to urea. Um, you treat the total ton. So we're seeing some positive benefits out of that product. This will be the third year in testing it, and every year we've had a positive. We actually moved it onto our production fields, and every ton of dry fertilizer we use gets Humahance on it. Um, there's a lot of products down here that we have just scratched over the last five years and quit using completely um, from other companies that you know I've promoted in my past career because we found either it's too high in salt or it's a byproduct of another company and it's maybe got arsenic or it's got heavy metals or something in it that we didn't want to keep using on our ground. So. You know, these are all things we're looking at in the research plots. Uh, we got our high yielding plots next to us that we're pushing some. Um, the only way you're going to get to see the results of that, though, is if you uh, join Cobb and I and uh, in the Mac group. You know, uh, if you haven't heard about Mac, it's how you learn about high yielding corn and beans. Um, we're trying different plots. The yield results will be given to any Mac member. Check us out at uh, Midwest Crop Consulting. Uh, check out the website. Kevin does a phenomenal job teaching about corn. I've come on board to help with beans. I mean, I know Kevin himself this year started following some of our bean programs, and I don't think anymore, Seth, you're going to hear Cobb talking about low-yielding beans, only positives. I know Mark Thomas uh, down in Kentucky followed our program through Mac, and he was ranting and raving the other week. Justin Woodall nice. was uh, calling me the other week. David Womack, we call him Poe. You know, he even, well, I don't know if his yields were any better because he'll never really tell me the truth, but I know he did a good job this year growing beans. You know, if you're from Tennessee, you better be watching out for him because he's a daggone good farmer. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit more about this combine. This thing looks ancient. Hey, I'll tell you what. It's, uh, it's a tank. It's yeah. ancient. It's got scales. So that way we can do all of our plot research. It uh, does not have a yield monitor. We do everything off scales. Nothing is done by yield. We check test weight and moistures on every plot. Um, because of our plot sizes, it's got a 15, 16 foot head on it. So it works perfect for everything we're doing, but it's a tank. It's an oldie, but a goodie, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like it. it I've, never seen, I've never seen one like it before. No, we call it the gold nugget. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Now, um, tell us a little bit more about this research plot here. What, it, what uh, kind of beans in here? Um, when so was, these when was all, it planted? So this was planted. All this was planted the second week in May. Okay. Um, this, this field, this is 60, I want to say 60 or 80 acres here in this um, block of ground. I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe it's 80. Mm -hmm. Um I'm pulling the research of the data right now. This is all a Stein 4-4 bean okay. that you're looking at right now. Um, this was planted May 10th. Uh, there was no additional, no infra, no 2x2 two two to any of our research. This is simply the products that we have been looking at. Um, like I said, right now where Ed is um, cutting is Monty's new product called Magnahume, along with carbon at I want to say a gallon and sugar at a gallon okay um, is the plots that we're into now the plots that are in front of us um, that have already been cut that was magni hume at 30 pounds magni hume at 60 pounds and like I said earlier everything's done on five or ten acre blocks how many uh, what's your row spacing row spacings on 15 inch rows okay everything here got planted at 160 to 170 thousand plant population a lot of beans it's a lot of beans so what are the yields like in these fields um we've been anywhere from 60 bushel all the way up to 135 hey yes some good stuff out here mm -hmm. we had one or two plots that did a little bit worse than that but you know we're looking at the product we're reevaluating. we do like to do a three-year test before we say hey this product's a flop this product's a failure you know, this year we were um, super dry. So yeah. that takes into effect on 
did this product work or it didn't but when a product is exceeding and we're seeing the 136 bushel yields mm -hmm. maybe we better be looking at it for in the wet year because it did so well in the dry year right yeah so that was my next question you never test a product for just one year no we do everything for three years okay so anything that we're doing right now that block will be set for three years mm -hmm. um same as the block over here to your right that'll only be for the max school for the next three years okay yes and we don't pick That's the cool. best fields for the best plots like i said we do we do have fenced in areas to keep wildlife out but once we get it tested in here and we see it works we go to the non-fenced in fields to see how does it carry on how does it work through there and how do we move forward ed does a phenomenal job you know ed does all the planning ed and i do the spraying together ed drives the combine you know ed stansfield's part of my team you know and i and you keep hearing me say you got to have a team you got to always be part of the team you know there's nate there's tom you know dennis stevens at monty's you know jeff singali the ceo of monty's is the one that brought magni hume to us this year to try you know um Joe Debman, you know, I call Joe all the time. Hey, what do you think we should test here? You know, or I have other guys, you know, you got Jason McGar, uh, Chris Thrasher, both with ABM inoculants. We got a lot of their research going on here with ABM. Plus, uh, Terry Vissing does a really good job of walking us around at the Commodity Classic and finding us new products to look at. Nice. So Vissing's one of the guys at Mac. Mm -hmm. um, him and I and Brooks went around the Commodity Classic this year. Uh, and got a bunch of new products in so we could do some testing with some new products but like i said ed handles the planting the harvesting he helps to haul the grain ed does a phenomenal job on everything that we're doing to get us to the next step in what, what we're seeing here today in the research plots that's really awesome yes you got a good team i do have a good team i'm very proud of the team we work well together sometimes we do fight but as long as they always know that i'm right and they're wrong we're always okay and Nate just walked up. Yeah, Nate walked up. That means he woke up from his nap. Was it a good three-hour nap today or a two-hour nap? <laughs> two and a half. Two and a half, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where are we? You know, when we're testing things, we did corn plots. All the corn plots are already done. Um, so now we're just focusing on the beans. This will probably take us to finish out the rest of this uh, area. It'll probably take us the next week. And then we'll be done. Okay. I mean, this is a lot of weighing, a lot of time consumed into doing testing. I mean, normally, if this was just a production field, we'd have it wicked, licked out in about three days, mm -hmm. the whole farm. But because of all the plot work and everything we do from start to finish, it takes three to four weeks to get it all done. Yeah. You know, we're looking at some things. You know, Brooks and I, being good friends over the years, you know, Brooks and I start, and he's asked me some things to test, and we've tested those things. And... You know, we really like to make sure we're doing everything for everybody that we can. Just wanted to get a shot of Nate. Oh. Wave, Nate. You're live. <laughs> Say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? <laughs> um, Dennis Stevens asked how high your fences are. How high the fences are? Well, this was the original fence. Mm. So the original fence is only 12 foot tall. And yes, I have seen deer jump it. That is why the two strands of high tensile sometimes are falling down. Oh All the goodness. fences after this have been built at 14 to 16 feet tall. Yeah. But the original fence, I have seen deer just decide to clear it. Jeez. They you can know, jump. And, and Dennis should know this. He's been here. He's looked at all these good fields before. He's probably just... Messing. Oh, I tell you what, Dennis is good. I mean, him and Joe have been down here. Joe loves walking out here and looking at the different pro the products that we're testing. Um, like I said, we give them all plot numbers, so anybody that comes through, it's always open, Seth. Nice. So if anybody wants to stop in or look middle of the summer or anything, they can always come. We'll always make time for them. We'll show them around. Um, Sometimes we tell them what we're testing. Other times we have certain companies that we're testing that they don't know we're testing their products. So we don't, we don't release that information. That's for our mm -hmm. in-house use. Right. Um, if companies give us information that, or products to test, we'll share it with everybody looking. That's why, you know, I know Jeff down there at Monty Singali said, let everybody know about MagniHume coming out. Nice. Yeah, I hear a lot of good things about that. Mm -hmm. Seeing a lot of good stuff on corn. I think it's a pretty good product coming out. 
Very nice. Yeah. I'm curious, um, what fungicide did you use this year? So all the beans and all of our plots uh, get four ounces of Preaxor mm. early on, and then we came back with another dose of Veltima afterwards. Oh. So Tim Helmers, our BASF rep, mm -hmm. has done a phenomenal job two years ago introducing us with Veltima. Mm. Um, we've always been a big Preaxor fan. Don't tell Temple I'm sharing this with you, okay? I only told him we use Preaxor. Okay. <laughs> so we have switched 100% now to Preaxor early, mm -hmm. and then we moved on to uh, Veltima. Okay. And if you really want to know the benefits to fungicides in high-yielding beans, mm -hmm. Sorry to do this to you, Seth, but you're going to have to join the Mac group for me to give you that information. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know, uh, you know where I can get a good deal for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You give us a free yellow gold membership, we'll oh, give you a done. free Mac membership. I'll trade you membership. Okay. <laughs> done and done. So you use so you Veltima on the corn, Revitec on the beans. Actually, we use Veltima on the beans, too, this oh, year. Oh, you too? Yes, we did. Now, that's interesting. Yes. I should move the drone so the combine doesn't run into it. Um... Okay, that's really interesting, actually. Yeah. We I'm, bought a pallet of Veltima early. Um, I didn't pay enough attention, so yeah, we use Veltima on the beans as well. Okay. And how did that work out? It worked any, out very well. Any difference? It, like... So turn in the Podfather's uh, episode to find out how we really did at the end, and uh, those beans had Veltima on them. Okay. So have you tried any Revitec? I'm curious. Um, we did not. We have not tried any Revitec. Okay. Copy that. Yep. We've, we're very happy with everything we're seeing out of the Veltima. We've seen phenomenal yields out of it. Yep. Um, we're seeing phenomenal yields out of it. It's still sticking with our Preaxor. Okay. Very good. Well, that's all the time we've got for right now, guys. We're going to have to bring the drone in because the battery's dying. Well, thank you. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Chris, for hanging out. Nate, yeah. always good to see you, sir. Always a pleasure. Maybe we'll go live in another minute. I think we might have some more batteries. Yes. Yeah. But... We'll, uh, we'll stick with us later on. We'll go live yeah. when we get to uh, look at some of the stuff at the distillery we're going to do. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Going down to the distillery. You guys stay tuned with us, and uh, we'll be back after a bit. Figuring out how to quit it. All right, talk soon.